basically, when I did media, the, the first year was great, but the second year was quite terrible. So I, um, once I finished, I didn't really know what to do. I didn't want to go into media stuff like, like journalism or anything to do with TV, like behind the scenes and stuff. Um, <clears throat> so I was just working, um, and in that time I watched, watched a lot of films because I weren't that busy. And I thought, I can't remember what film I was watching, but I think, oh, I probably watched a good film if it uh, got me into wanting to act. So what I did was I applied very late on, um, last August, um, <clears throat> before the course started in September, and I had to have an audition. Um, I passed that, and here I am, and I really enjoy it. I've always been a show off, and being the person I am, it just kind of interested me from about being about five years old, my mum said to people, I used to talk to people randomly at the bus stop, and from about five years old, my mum would go, you'll see him on TV one day, not knowing that I'd actually try and do drama by the end of it. But, but I give it a go, and it seemed to be like a natural thing, and I seemed to just be naturally good at it. So it just seemed to be the logical step for me to get into that sort of field, but being the competitive sort of injury industry it is, it's kind of... Maybe, for the type of person I am, maybe it's not the best for me, but I enjoy it and I see myself as if you're going to do a job, you may as well do something you enjoy and this is the one thing I enjoy and I can't really see myself doing anything else. Probably because, rather than just doing, like, I'm just used to being on stage, like, performing, I suppose I just wanted to experience more backstage and sort of different aspects of it. I'd like to be out of Sheffield, I think, um, just because there's not really that many uh, outlets, should I say, regarding getting jobs in performing arts. I think there are certain uh, low budget theatre groups that I can get into, um, but maybe in five years time I'd like to be uh, going to bigger things just like London and auditioning over there and maybe abroad maybe in America you never know what you can do until you get there so like the popular stuff like LA and New York Broadway Hollywood stuff like that but um, I mean it's a long shot but it's not out of the question I want to be on stage, I, whether that's in minor roles. I, the thing with me is it's not all about the money for me. I'm doing it because I love it. it. And if I can get some money out of it and I can earn a living from doing what I love, then that's a bonus. But it's even one of them is even if my acting career doesn't go the way I want it to, I'm still always going to do it, even as just a hobby. But I, I want to have been, hopefully, to drama school again. That's money problems it's expensive I mean you're talking like nine grand a year and some then you can't even get student finance by the time I'd be in my third year so it's like I'd have to pay for it myself and things like that and it's 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 the way to go if you want to get into this sort of industry but there's just so much that you have to do and so much you have to kind of sacrifice in order that you've got to speculate to accumulate in this sort of game it's just there's all sorts of competition and I mean it's something like one in 500 actors are employed so and it's, it's I, I, I want to be on stage I'm, I'm I would love to do films and things like that but I I love an audience participation I love the fact that you can get the reaction from the audience as they're there and you know that if you're doing something good that the audience are reacting to it it's right there except like when you're filming it's uh, one thing that Whoopi Goldberg actually is a quote that she made it was like as, you're, as a comedian or something like that, or as a sort of stage actor, you have to realise that your audience is there, not kind of there in the sense of they are looking at you. You just need to realise that the audience hits the camera and it's kind of, you kind of have to apply that into film. But I've like my experience has come from stage and that's like mainly what I've done. I've done a couple of films, but 
it's a very different game. I, I want to be on stage, definitely, where I want to be in five years, whether that's paid or unpaid, I just want to be doing something on stage. Probably teaching. I'm not really looking to actually, like, go on stage, if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm a leader, not a follower, so I'd hate it if people were there, like, tell me what to do 24-7, um, to be honest. You say teacher as in teaching drama or just... Um, I'm, I do dance as well. So I've taught dance like around and about Sheffield. So maybe dance and drama or just drama. I'm sort of like wanting a bit of a change of yeah. thing. I love Anthony Hopkins. I just think the way he does his characterization, like when he was playing like Hannibal Lecter, he, he based his character on a lizard. And just like little things like that I just find really interesting because I like, think about the amount of depth you have to go into to get into a character. And like people like, so um, there's quite a few that are like that, but I'm not really into the whole like method thing, you know, like living the character and things like that. I understand why actors do it and I understand that it kind of can help and you if you live that character then there's no reason why you couldn't be that character, you are that character. I just think in order to kind of separate yourself from reality but I think you do need to get that sort of sense of reality while you're doing things you do need to realize that like you are yeah you're not yourself you are this character but you are this character only up until the play is being put on the film being put on whatever you want to call it well there is actors, actors such as uh, Sean Penn who's a very diverse actor I mean he's been in Mystic River Milk I Am Sam um, all sorts. He's directed a few as well. Into the Wild, I think, is one of them. Uh, he's really, really diverse. Um, Clint Eastwood, I think, you know, is a badass actor. Usually just plays the badass roles. Um, you know, against the rules kind of law guy. And uh, I think DiCaprio is very um, diverse as well with his roles. Um, who did he play? Um, J. Edgar Hoover, Clint Eastwood's film. He did Gatsby, he did Inception, one of my favourite films. Um, so I think those three really are um, actors I can look up to because they're very diverse in what they do. Probably Velma Kelly out of Chicago. Don't ask me why, please don't ask me why. And the actress who plays her, is she your favourite or is someone you would like to... Um, well, if you were going into drama properly, would you like to emulate her? I don't know, I'm trying to think. It's Catherine Zeta-Jones who plays her. Um, she's alright, but I wouldn't say she was one of like my top five. <laughs> I don't know, probably... Female actors who are probably like, I'd say people like Meryl Streep, who are quite diverse. Um, well, I've always thought I'd like to play more, more difficult roles, um, especially with I Am Sam. Sean Penn in that plays a... Um, a disabled man who has a child and I think that's a really difficult performance to do. You have to do a lot of research. I like a job where you have to do a lot of research into a character. I like to um, not really play the normal guys as such. I wouldn't mind playing a hero but I kind of see playing a villain is more interesting than a hero. Um, such as like a Bond villain or anything like that, you know, that'd be quite cool because they're a bit more quirky than the heroes. You know, there's a lot going on rather than just one motive for this, you know, Bond character is there to save the world, almost. I reckon I could play a pretty good, like, sort of Mad Hatter or something, like, because of my free running background and stuff like that, I'm 
and my sort of how agile I can be and things like that. It's stuff like, and any sort of role, like I'm a big fan of Game of Thrones and things like that, and I, I can see myself doing a lot of things like that, as in, I'm my comedic roles are pretty much my strong point, but I do pride myself on being able to really get into depth of a character and kind of, like with the character I'm playing at the minute, Rivers, it just seems like he's kind of almost like a sort of, he's basically the harbinger of death when you actually read into the script, like he takes the guys off to war and brings them back when they're technically dead as spirits and things like that. He's kind of like, almost like the ferryman in like sort of Greek mythology sort of thing and like, or, or the Grim Reaper or however you want to see it like that. It's kind of just like, it's just a bit weird. I, I see myself as being kind of, I could probably, I could make a brilliant serial killer. I could probably play it like, like I say, I've said Hannibal Lecter, but like I could play something like that, I think. I think I could do that pretty well. <laughs>
may be the character she is definitely a strong woman and it's they just seem to I think they click really well um, Rivers as a character is just quite an, it's just an interesting guy and isn't the sort of usual and how I'm playing him like I'm playing him quite common I'm not playing him the big like how you saved the World War One man talking with the big moustache he's, he's very much a, a Yorkshireman uh, being from a Lancashire regiment, I decided to play as a Yorkshireman just to give it, you know, the classic War of the Roses. Well, even though the War of the Roses wasn't between Lancashire and Shet um, the Yorkshire, it was kind of a different, complete different matter. But um, that's what everyone seems to believe it's like. So I kind of added the contrast there in the fact that there may be a slight lack of respect for Rivers being from Yorkshire, whereas the thing is saying Lancashire. But then with the authority figure and within the ranks of the army, you automatically have to have respect for your superiors. It's just a natural pace of things. And I just think there's just so much depth to him as a person and not even necessarily like emotionally just in just as a person in general he's just he's obviously seen things he's been to the sedan and things like that and he's been there done that and i basically saw him as um like we were given um from the director was told to basically what is your purpose as in uh, for your character and there is one bit like, and at the end she basically said, um, so who do you think by the end of the play that um, is actually where they want to be? And there's one character called um, Sarah who ends up being a bus conductor. But bearing, bearing in mind it was a very male profession at the time and she was one of the first women to do it. Um, and I said, Rivers is going to, and even though Rivers dies at the end, but I've always thought it's kind of like Lieutenant Dan in Forrest Gump, as in every one of his family has died in a major war and he's the one who hasn't. Rivers has been in a lot of ma like at least a couple of major wars or seen a lot of battle, but hasn't died. And I think if anything, he wants to die on the battlefield. And by the time of it, he's led his men into battle. He's led the sm one of the smallest regiments. The, the, technically, it's one of the smallest regiments on the British Isles. They raised seven hundred people from Lancashire, and that's a big deal. And I think he's very happy at the fact that he's had the respect from his fellow man. He's found a woman he loved, whether he got there or not. He found a purpose for himself and it's just kind of the depth of him is just what I love and he's just a very interesting guy. <laughs> I, w I was quite happy to be backstage doing stage manager and everything else just for the fact that last the last show I did when I was here in May was a war play so I was sort of a bit like I can't I don't really want to do it again I wanted to wait till like we got the chance to do something different rather than just that again. I don't know, I just thought, give me a chance to step back and actually like, have a chance to do something different. <laughs> <laughs>
you tend to, and I like the fact that you tend to see people, like you, you, you get to know people within the last week and thing and how people deal with stress and things like that. And, you, and it makes you like a stronger group, as in you, you know what people like and don't like and you know what needs to be done or who, needs, who you can say things to. And it's, and it's really good, whether it be that people are stressing out and they'll take it out on you, but that's just part and parcel of life, really. You stress out, you take it out on people. And in this industry, there's a lot of that. You work very close-knit with people all the time. And, it's, and But that's the thing with the drama course. It's just everyone kind of gets on. It's not really... You either get on. It's, it's one extreme or the other. You either get on or hate each other all the time. But in that, in the end, you all come together and it all tends to be kind of happy-go-lucky. And everyone, by the time they've done the play, and by the time the stress is over, it's everything's fine and it, between, like with it being the next week it's kind of and especially with the like lines to learn and things like that and having only a week to rehearse it as well it's like it's, we've done a session of blocking and one kind of session of rehearsal so far so it's like the play is not even ready like at all and it, but that i think that gives everyone kind of a well, excuse the thing, a bit of a kick up the arse. Because it, does, it just makes people work faster, work harder. Or, again, with the one extreme or the other, with it being a drama course, you either get people working like they're absolute... To, to just working to themselves to death, or you get people who don't do anything. But that's the same with, I think, with anything. But it's just like, with it being a drama course, everything's heightened. It's like, everything, like... If something's really good to a drama student, it's from going from really good to going to, oh my God, it's absolutely amazing, or... Oh, that's kind of not bad. Oh God, I hate it. it it's just, it's just really interesting. And I, I, I'm a very avid people watcher as well. So it's like you watch people and you see actually how they behave. And like, and especially through a characterization point of view, you'll see things in people and you're like, I'm going to add that to my character and see if they notice that I'm based it on them. But you never know. It's, it's just a really fun thing. And especially in the last week, everyone's up for it. And oh God, oh God, oh God, I'm rushing about here and there, here and there. It just, it tends to be kind of just an interesting week. And, Especially with it not having the rehearsal time beforehand, I just I just think it'll be quite interesting and quite full on, and I quite like that. And it's think it'll be from working your ass off, and then but it's the the reward you get at the end of it when you know you've done a play in a week, and it's like wow, it's like if you can manage to do that, and you can do it convincingly enough. I mean, no, within a week you're not going to have your best performance, I and mean, you're just not. But I think some of some people will definitely surprise people, and I think we'll pull it off quite convincingly. Well, I say quite convincingly, I just think we'll pull it off full stop, to be quite honest, we've got a strong group, so. Never hear gas anymore, when we gas, we're safe as we can be, but boss feeling mustard gas, that's much too much for me, they're killing us, they